My next guest takes on Bobby Moffa at Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series coming up here on August 7th. It is Jacob Kilburn joining me here on the program for the very first time. Jacob, how are you? I am doing well, man. It's good to see you. Appreciate you having me on. Hey, I appreciate you taking the time, man. And uh, first time I've had you on the show, so i got to ask the natural question. How does a nice guy like yourself get involved in combat sports? Um, I, probably the simplest answer would be I, I don't fight the human being's natural instinct uh, to fight. But like any kid, it started with um, I saw a Rocky movie when I was eight years old, and I thought... Uh, I'm going to be heavyweight champion in the world. And of course, I had no idea about weight classes or anything. So it just started, uh, you know, as a, as a dream, as a kid. And anyways, long story short, here we are. When was that moment for you where you realized you could make a run at this? Because you've got that 6-1 and one record. Things have worked out pretty well for you, I'd say. Um, you've got a couple milestones. The first one would probably be the amateur debut where you, you know, since you're a child, you have this dream and it, and it builds up and you've been making steps, you know, your whole childhood working towards this. You got the days building up to the first time you're going to do it. And it's like, okay, well, this is becoming a real thing. And then probably um, when I won uh, by knockout in my professional debut, uh, several years later, I was like, okay, well, this is, this is real. We could really do this. This is, you know, this could really happen. So it was probably my pro debut. Excellent. Like hearing that. Um, were you a fan of the sport before you started training or did that come after? Um, so I started in, in, in boxing, and, and I, I didn't really have uh, much of an idea about what MMA was. And we were at Hollywood Video when I was a kid. We rented a, a, a Ken Shamrock highlight video, and it, you know, in between every fight, he would talk a little bit. And it was kind of a special, and I've tried to find it to this day, and I can't find it. I don't know what it's called. I don't know where it's at. But uh, I saw that, and I saw him doing leg locks and, and things like that. And then I saw some Steven Seagal movies, and that all happened within about a month. And then I really became a fan, and that was right around the time of the, the debut of The Ultimate Fighter and all that stuff. And it just it kind of all happened at the same time. And um, So I was a fan and a student all about the same time. You know, I think you can go on like IMDb or Internet Movie Database uh, and search Ken Shamrock. It, I think it would have all of his credits, even if it's like a sports thing. I'm sure you could probably track it down somewhere. Someone on the Internet must have it. It's it's the Internet. Everyone's. You know, I need even, to find even, it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the most obscure stuff you you can find on the Internet now. It's, it's crazy. Um, so we'll definitely have to hunt that down. But uh, along with fighting, uh, what else do you do for a living as far as, you know, paying bills and everything like that? So, yeah, uh, fighting pays a chunk of it, but it doesn't um, it doesn't it doesn't pay them all. I, I am a full-time martial arts instructor. Oh, excellent. Day in and day out, uh, we're teaching judo and Japanese jiu-jitsu and karate and, and kickboxing and, uh, you know, some self-defense classes and stuff like that. So um, whether I'm training for fighting or I'm training other people to, to fight or I'm training other people to, to not get killed, um, martial arts is my life. <laughs> Very cool. Well, like I said, it's worked out well for you here. And now you got this opportunity on, on Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series. Were you expecting an opportunity like this after your last fight, or did this come out of the blue? Well, uh, I signed with First Round Management uh, days after after the last fight, and I had spoke to them before about it, a year ago to the day almost. And I was just really leery of, uh, of signing with a management company. And then after you know, growing more in my, you know, just, just being more mature and having a, a different set of eyes. Uh, I had this mindset of, you know, a lot of people have been asking me, does it, you know, do you seem shocked that, you know, this is happening so early? And I'm, I'm on the other side of the page. I'm like, I mean, it, how, what else do I have to do? How, how many more people do I have to be? And, um, so when, when I, after the phone conversation, it was about a 30 minute phone conversation I realized um, if I sign with these people, they're gonna. I'm doing all the things right on my end, but I don't have the context and I can't negotiate myself into that position. So I let them figure it out. And you know, a week after I signed, we got the phone call. So very cool. Well, th that just shows the power of good management right there. Are you? Uh, so, so who's your guy? Are you Matt? Uh, is Matt uh, managing you or Maurice? No, Abe Kawa. Oh, Abe Kawa is okay. Wow. Okay, interesting. Because I thought he only managed uh, UFC guys, but that that's uh, he's, he's one of the best. I mean, you just see some of the fights his clients get. It's pretty incredible. Yeah, we're one fight away from him managing the UFC guy, so. <laughs> exactly. That, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, very well said. I like that. Um, you got a tough opponent here in Bobby Moffat. 12-3 uh, record, trains at the MMA lab. How do you feel like you match up against him? 
Well, I think I match up well against uh, everybody. He's a, I fought a lot of guys with his um, his similar style. He's a, he's kind of a, a pressure fighter, um, probably 70% grappling heavy. Um, he's from Illinois, so he probably has a wrestling background. He seems to have some jiu-jitsu skills. So um, I think I match up well. I think he, in, in, in every area, he's got some openings. And in every area, he's got some skills that he's been able to have success with, um, you know, the same positions, the same moves in every fight. So he's a good, you know, solid, formidable opponent. Obviously, he's got 12 wins on record. Um, so, you know, but I think I match up just fine with him. And I, I think he's um, he's going to give me some stuff to work with. And uh, where are you training right now? And who are some of your main training partners? So I am training at two different places right now. Harris Holt Martial Arts Academy and Smash Brothers Jiu-Jitsu. Um, so I'm, my coach is Jeff Mackins and Lance Boyd. They're keeping my, my hands and feet sharp and coach Ricky Ward and Alan Shabaro are keeping my, my jujitsu sharp. And then, you know, I've got college wrestlers and stuff that come through. And, um, so far too many training partners to name, but. but right. We'd be here all day. Yeah. Yeah, man. Okay. That's good. It's always nice getting different looks. Um, what about the weight cut? I know this fight's a couple weeks away, but is everything on point getting down to 45? Oh yeah. I, uh. I used to used to have kind of a hard time with it, but I mean I'm not a huge 145. That's not that's not how I win my fights. I'm not that guy that you know won the fight because he he was yeah he, he was he was the best weight cutter, right? You're the guy who wins the fight because of the fight skill. Yeah, skill skill wins the fight. I'm, I am of the mindset of you know it, it, weight is important, um, and you know five pounds it's not just five pounds. I mean if I pick up a five pound weight and throw it at your face, you'll be like, well, five pounds hurts, but it's um no I'm I'm like 165 164 right now and that's I can make 45 in a week if I needed to so it's not too bad. Excellent. Um, who's going to be in your corner for this fight? It'll be Coach Lance Boyd and uh, and Ricky Ward, my jiu-jitsu coach. Um, I had a couple guys I can bring. We might have some more that that kind of come down and hang out with us the week of and, and help drill positions and stuff. But I'll have a striking coach and I'll have a jiu-jitsu coach in the corner. And uh, how do you see this fight playing out on August 7th? Um, well, obviously there's a lot of pressure to not just win, but win impressively. So I don't think there's going to be a filling out process. Um, there never is for me, and, and he seems to be the same kind of guy. He's not a circle and jab type guy. He, he comes he comes right at you and, and, and gets going right away. So if I had my opinion, i say it's going to probably be over in the first round. A lot of the contender series fights don't go the distance. And, uh, you know, I'm not rushing to finish, but obviously that's in the back of your mind. You need to really, really, really perform. So if there's ever been a time to, you know, kind of get that fire under your butt, it's now. So I'm sure we'll both meet each other in the middle and we'll figure it out. And uh, we talked all about your fight career and your job and everything like that. What about downtime? I'm sure you don't get much of it, but are you getting in any Netflix or video games or anything like that? What would I find you doing in your downtime? Uh, so I am... Like I said, the training starts at 5.30 in the morning, and i got to be at work by 7. I start teaching at 7, and I get done teaching at 7. So I'm putting in Monday through Friday, 12-hour days, and then at 7 in the evening, we train until 9. So training in the morning, training in the evening, um, I get a lunch break. Uh, sometimes if i got the energy, I'll get a run in on the lunch break. But, yeah, in the evening, it's, um, you know, get some pool time or maybe some – some 13 reasons why or something like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, I got a, I got a fiance that, that I try to, you know, spend as much time as I can with. So that's the majority of my time goes towards, you know, you know, Bible study and TV time and just not thinking about fighting for a couple hours. So, well, uh, everyone's got to watch this fight coming up here August 7th, live on USC Fight Pass. It is Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series. Jacob, it was uh, great getting a chance to talk to you, man. Just remind people where they can find you on social media. And if you got any sponsors or shout outs, the floor is yours. So you can find me on Facebook just at Jacob Kilburn. Uh, you can find me on, on Instagram at killer underscore Kilburn. That's K-I-L-B-U-R-N. And... Uh, Sometimes it's fight related stuff. Sometimes it's it's funny stuff with me doing you know front flips and and whatever it is. Um, so there's my social media plugs, sponsors. Uh, we've had a lot of good people in my corner for this time. Um, Patterson Building and Design, uh, Freedom Building, Mark Reed Knives, 
uh, rolling bones gear, keeping me stocked up with a tremendous amount of geese and rash guards and shorts and things such as that. Uh, Bow before the king, sunglasses, and um, yeah, man, I could go on and on. Uh, so, tattoos by Thomas. Um, I'd have to go back and look at the list, man. It's it's <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, again, we'd be here for a while. Yeah, a lot of people were pulling for me, and everybody realizes how big of an opportunity this is. So, um, all of you, you know who you are. <laughs> What's up, Fight Fans? If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to see even more interviews with your favorite UFC and Bellator fighters. We've also got coverage at events, including post-fight press conferences and media scrums. And if you like this video, check out the video to my right. It's worth your time.